What's good everyone, I'm Brian Sampson from Dunking with Wolves coming at you from the newly branded Timberwolves film room. Today, let's take a look at how the Minnesota Timberwolves should use Nemenya Bielitsa. In belly, the Timberwolves have one of the best kept secrets in the league who ranks in the 88th percentile by knocking down an amazing 44% of his 3 point shots according to cleaningtheglass.com. But the bad news is, Minnesota isn't using him in the right ways or as often as they should. The easiest way to use Belly is in basic pick and pop situations, especially considering that he knocks down 44.3% of his catch and shoot opportunities according to NBA.com. Unfortunately, the Timberwolves only use him as a roll or pop man on 5.8% of his possessions. I mean, just watch this beautiful stroke. Yuck yuck! Even if he's not shooting immediately off the catch, he's a very underrated driver and does a great job of using his strength and body control to finish around the rim where he converts 72% of his shots. That brings us to one of the most criminally underused aspects of his game, his playmaking. Throughout his time in the NBA, Belly has shown he can set up his teammates and himself when given that opportunity. After catching the ball, he loves to use his pump fake to set up the drive past defenders. Even though it's a slow fake, it does a pretty nice job of emulating his real shot and gives him just enough of an edge. After that, he's, he uses his strength advantage over his opponents to get to where he wants on the floor and then displays great body control and touch around the rim. Ooh, boy, you see this floater? That's something you mainly see in guards. His playmaking even extends beyond half court. When he's been given the opportunity, he showed off his length of the floor dribbling abilities and they haven't disappointed. Unfortunately, we don't get to see that side of Belly very often as he's typically banned to spot up duty on the three point line. Sadly, that's where he spends 45.2% of his possessions. Waiting for the likes of Jamal Crawford, Jeff Teague, or Andrew Wiggins to extend their tunnel vision just far enough and discover him wide open from downtown. To be fair, and to give credit where credit is due, Thibodeau does implement a nice wrinkle with belly off the ball that creates a number of good looks from the outside. Often placed away from the ball, Minnesota has turned belly into a weapon even when he's not directly involved in a ball screen. Watch here as Crawford and Zhang run a two-man game, but Belly slides over from the weak side wing, presenting himself as a viable option for a skip pass and an open three. This play is there because Zhang never pops to the three-point line, always choosing to pop mid-range or roll to the basket. Another thing Minnesota did well with Belly came earlier in the season when they ran this alteration to the Spain pick and roll. This is a great play design that netted Belly many open looks, but the Timberwolves have completely gone away from it for some reason. The play starts with the guard bringing the ball up the floor and receiving a high ball screen at the top of the key from the center. Belly is positioned at the free throw line and the two wings are in the corners to present optimal spacing. The guard can then pick either side and dribbles toward the elbow. While he's doing that, Zhang rolls to the hoop and Belly pops to the top of the key before catching a turnaround pass from the guard for an open three. This play works perfectly because due to Belly's positioning, his man is forced to tag the roll man and prevent an easy bucket at the rim. While his defender is doing that, he's popping away from him and finding the open spot on the perimeter. I have no idea why the Timberwolves stopped running this play, but they need to get back to it immediately. Even if Belly doesn't catch and shoot, he's able to show off his pump fake and playmaking skills we discussed earlier and get a shot at the rim. Minnesota can also steal from other teams and implement different actions they run to get shooters open, such as the San Antonio Spurs and their hammer action. Well, there's a lot of stuff to dissect in this play. Let's just focus on the back screen being set on Jimmy Butler that nets Danny Green an open three from the corner. The Timberwolves have a chance to run an impromptu hammer action in this town's post-up, but Taj Gibson fails to anticipate the skip pass to the corner and doesn't seal off Belly's man, which allows him to get out to the line quicker and force the miss by contesting the shot. Overall, Thibodeau and the coaching staff do a couple of nice things to spring Belly free, but they need to make him more of a focal point of the second unit that struggled. He's one of the Timberwolves' best shooters and needs to be featured more heavily. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to the newly branded Timberwolves Film Room. I have more new stuff coming out shortly, so stay tuned. In the meantime, I'd appreciate if you give this video the old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
For all your Timberwolves related analysis, you can follow me on Twitter at Brian Sampson NBA. Catch you next time, Wolves fans.